In this video, let us consider the microscopic features of salivary glands. I am grateful to Dr. Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing these histology sections. You can visit this site for other histology videos. Salivary glands are compound tubulo SNR exocrine glands. They duct strain into oral cavity. They secrete saliva which helps in lubrication, deglutition, tasting, defense and digestion. Salivary glands are broadly classified into major salivary glands and minor salivary glands. Major glands are the parotid, submandibular and sublingual glands. They are enclosed in a capsule and their ducts run in a, a small distance before they open into oral cavity. Minor glands are the labial, buccal, palatal, palatoglossal and lingual glands. These are not surrounded by a capsule and their ducts open directly into the oral cavity. Major salivary glands are covered by a capsule which is made up of moderately dense connective tissue. Capsule sends connective tissue septa into the gland and they divide the gland into many lobes. The interlobar septa contain larger salivary ducts, large blood vessels and few nerves. In case of parotid gland, interlobar septum may also show sections of facial nerve branches. Connective tissue septae further divide each lobe into smaller lobules. Each lobule has tubular or SNR secretory end pieces draining into a single intralobular duct and the gland may also present variable amount of adipose tissue. Secretory end pieces of the SNI are of three types, namely serous types, mucous SNI and the mixed SNS. Serous SNI are usually spherical in shape and are lined by protein secreting serous cells. Serous cells are pyramidal in shape with a rounded nucleus close to its base as shown by the arrows here. Serous cells show biphasic staining that is basal basophilia and apical eosinophilia. Presence of rough endoplasmic reticulum and free ribosomes result in the basophilic staining of the basal cytoplasm, whereas presence of the zymogen granules result in the acidophilic staining of the apical cytoplasm. Mucous SNI are usually tubular in shape. Mucous cells lining these SNI are cylindrical in shape with a flattened nucleus at its base. Apical cytoplasm is filled with large pale staining secretory droplet which contains mucin. These mucinogen granules at the apical region usually they are lost during the preparation of HND stained sections making these cells appear especially the ap apical region of these cells appear almost empty. A mixed acinus are lined by both serous and mucous cells. Although both types of cells are arranged side by side in the SNS, routine fixation methods which we use while preparing HND sections, they result in swelling of the secretory granules of the mucous cells which will push the serous cells to the periphery so that the serous cells appear as crescent shaped serous demilunes. This is a fixation artifact but this fixation artifact of the mucous SNS with the serous demilune is the classical appearance of a mixed acinus in an HND stained section. Both serous and mucous acini as well as the proximal ducts are enclosed by myoepithelial cells which have contractile property. These cells are within the basement membrane of the acinus appearing as either flattened or round profile nuclei which is close to basement membrane. They help in moving the secretion of the acini towards the excretory duct. 
Ducts of the salivary gland begin from the tubulo acinar secretory units. The intercalated ducts begin from the secretory acinus. They are lined by low cuboidal cells. These ducts are more prominent in the serous and mixed type of salivary glands. They show carbonate anhydrase activity and secrete bicarbonate ions into the duct and absorb chlorine from it. Striated ducts on the contrary, they are lined by low columnar cells. They are lined, called as striated cells because striated ducts because the cells lining them show basal striations due to infoldings of the basal plasma membrane. They are also having elongated mitochondria in the basal region and both this presence of basal infolding and the elongated mitochondria is required for absorbing sodium and chlorine ions from the salivary secretion within the duct and secreting potassium and bicarbonate ions into it. These basal striations and elongated mitochondria will displace the nucleus to a more central position within these cells. The secretory acini, intercalated duct and the striated ducts, they are all the intralobular structures. From this intralobular ducts, the salivary gland secretion is drained by a series of extralobular excretory ducts of increasing size. Based on their location, these are labeled as interlobular, interlobar and the terminal ducts. They are progressively lined by pseudostratified columnar, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar and lastly by stratified squamous epithelium close to the opening into the oral cavity. You can see an intercalated duct here lined by cuboidal epithelium. Here you can see a striated duct lined by low columnar cells showing basal striations and centrally displaced nucleus. In addition to modifying the electrolyte content of the acinar secretion, the cells lining these ducts also help in secreting calicrine and lysozyme and help in transportation of immunoglobulin A. Here you are seeing an interlobular duct lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium. In this section, you can see an interlobar duct lined by stratified cuboidal epithelium. Here you are seeing a main duct lined by stratified columnar epithelium. Major salivary glands are the parotid gland which is made up of only serous SNI, submandibular salivary gland which is made up of predominantly serous SNI with few mucus and mixed SNI. Sublingual gland which is made up of mainly mucus acini. Parotid gland contains only serous acini. The serous secretions of this parotid gland contains amylase, calicrine, lactoferrin and lysozyme. The gland shows variable amount of adipose tissue, a large number of intralobular, interlobular and interlobar ducts. Submandibular gland on the contrary shows predominantly serous SNI, few mucous SNI as well as mixed SNI. The mixed SNI in the submandibular gland appears to show mucous acinus with a crescent shaped serous demilune. Submandibular gland also shows intralobular intercalated and striated ducts. In addition, it shows interlobular, interlobar as well as the terminal excretory duct which is called as Wharton's duct. Sublingual gland shows mainly mucous acini or tubules. Compared to the other two glands, Sublingual gland shows lesser number of ducts. All the mucous acini are predominant. Few mixed acini with serous demilunes are also seen. 
So quickly recollecting whatever we have learned so far. Major salivary glands are covered by a capsule. Septae divide this gland into lobes and lobules. Parenchyma is made of serous acini in case of parotid gland, mucous acini predominantly in sublingual glands, a mix of both serous and mucous acini in submandibular glands. Saliva is modified by the intralobular, intercalated as well as striated ducts. Saliva is drained into oral cavity by a series of excretory ducts of larger size which are lined by different types of stratified epithelium. Myoepithelial cells are found inside the basement membrane around the serous acini as well as the proximal ducts and they help in release and flow of the saliva. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.